It is well with my soul. Brought to you by Baptist Temple Church in San Antonio, Texas. We are a part of a family of churches and service organizations sharing a large strategically located campus to meet the spiritual and physical needs of our community. Let's pray. Today I approach your throne of grace with gratitude. I am thankful for your love and your mercy. I'm glad to be able to read your word and, and find encouragement every day. I feel better knowing that your grace is sufficient for me and that you have even commanded me to be strong and of good courage. Your word instructs me, be not afraid nor be dismayed because you are with me wherever I go. So I want to give you praise. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. Amen. The Early Learning Center's playground has undergone many changes over the years. When the time came for replacing some of our equipment, God gave us a vision for a playground where children with disabilities could play with their friends of typical abilities. It would create opportunities for disabled children to enjoy outdoor physical activity and combat the loneliness of isolation they might feel. Furthermore, it would help build understanding and compassion in everyone. It was one more way for Baptist Temple to show God's love to our community in a practical way. Compassionate people caught on to the vision and began to help. There were grants and gifts and fundraisers. There were donations of material, services and labor until suddenly we were fully funded. We found ourselves in a position that Moses was in when he declared that people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. Missionary Hudson Taylor once said, God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. I stand in awe of how God supplied our needs through financial gifts, large and small. They were all needed. The donations of material we received stretched our funds. Most important to me was the diversity and numbers of people who pitched in. And even the way construction workers, exempt from the stay-at-home order, were able to complete the installation. There are still a few finishing touches, and the dedication and ribbon cutting must be put off until we are clear to gather in large groups. But the funding for this project is complete. No more is needed. Your continued generosity to the ministries of Baptist Temple is appreciated. Ah 
this so often that I wonder if people are just now discovering this. And I wonder if the folks who say it actually believe it. While there is truth to that statement that the church is not a building, it's not relevant at a time like this. Church buildings are fine, thank you. They are still standing. Empty, you say? Well, most churches are empty six days a week. The Greek word that we translate as church is ekklesia, and it doesn't mean building, it means the assembly. More on that later, but first let me defend church buildings. Church buildings are a symbol of God's presence in the community, or at least they ought to be. Some are beautiful works of art. Some, especially urban churches like ours, are hubs of activity that provide services to our neighbors, serving both physical and spiritual needs. During this stay-at-home time, our church facilities still actively operate essential services, such as our early learning center and funeral office. Our solar panels quietly provide energy for our community, our cell tower keeps people connected, and our radio antennas keep security alarms online. But a church is not a building. It's an assembly, which is exactly what we are prevented from doing. The Bible tells us not to forsake gathering together, yet here we are, maintaining social distance. Now Jesus said that whenever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. That is a powerful and comforting truth. Even in the largest churches, people relate to each other in small groups. In Baptist churches, those small groups have traditionally been Sunday school classes. But things have been changing for a while now, and that change has been accelerated by our current condition. We have to adapt. In order to maintain the best possible care, we have mobilized our deacons and other trained leaders to be phone angels. All of our folks get a weekly call. Needs and prayer requests are communicated, and food is delivered to people in need. You know, Jesus told us about a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. This is how Luke recorded it. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety and nine and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Now, when the shepherd noticed that one of his sheep was missing, he left the ninety-nine in search of that one. There's a powerful message there. Jesus teaches us to do ministry to the level of one percent. No one is to be overlooked. Taking care of one another is a vital function of the church. Our phone angels are making sure that happens. You know, we have been preparing for many years to provide this level of care. Another vital task of the church is discipleship. And one way we have been able to continue our group Bible studies is through phone conferencing. If you're not part of a group, contact the office. We'll help set you up. Of course, you can study the Bible on your own or with your family. The Bible teaches us in Deuteronomy, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. This emergency has given us an opportunity to think about what is essential in our personal lives, in our relationships, and in our church. I don't know when we're going to be cleared to do public worship again, but in the meantime, we can build on strengthening our fellowship and our discipleship. The Bible tells us to train yourselves for godliness. This is a good time to strengthen our spiritual walk, to strengthen it through prayer, to strengthen it through Bible study. This is especially true if you're a leader in the church. John Maxwell often said that everything rises and falls on leadership. So leadership development needs to be a strong priority at this time. And we all need to be leaders now. Studies of Sunday school growth have showed that every new leader would help the church grow by 10 people. This is important because Baptist, the Baptist Church, the Southern Baptist Church in particular, grew to be very large and very powerful just on the strength of Sunday school alone. Imagine, 50 people can lead 500. 100 people can lead 1,000. 
The key, though, is having the right leader in the right places. Too often, we follow traditions, and because we need this position filled or that position filled, that's where we put our people. But we need to have the right leaders in the right places. In Corinthians, the Bible tells that the church is Christ's body. And like a body, we're made up of different parts. Noses, ears, elbows, toes. Each of us have a different function. Not everyone is a teacher. Not everyone is an usher. Some greet, some mow the lawn. Some make phone calls, and others answer the phone. When we minister in the unique way, and for the unique purpose for which God has created us, we're not only fruitful, we are fulfilled. In Ephesians, we learn that we are His workmanship, that is God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We at Baptist Temple have a better than average number of people engaged in ministry than other churches of our size. And one of our strengths is the maturity of our leaders. Over the last 10 years, we have developed our campus into a lighthouse for our community. Before the shutdown, we had over 1,000 people in this campus each week coming to school, coming to get food, shopping, coming for classes, coming for other services. And this does not include parents picking up their children. That's a lot of people coming to this place. We offer many services to these folks, but we need to prayerfully consider what else we can offer, and more importantly, how we can draw them closer to Jesus. This strange intermission that we're, that we're in offers us an opportunity. Jesus had 12 close followers, 70 at one point, Following his resurrection, there was a strange intermission. Jesus had gone into heaven, and he told his followers to wait. Now at this point, there are 120 followers waiting 50 days. 50 days had passed since the resurrection. Then the Holy Spirit came down and filled Jesus' followers, and they began to preach boldly. They preached boldly to the crowds that had gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Weeks. When Peter preached the gospel, 3,000 were converted. 3,000 who went back to their own communities with the gospel message. This was an unstoppable force that has been setting the world on fire ever since. Sometimes we don't see it. We don't see God's work. We ask questions about it. But Jesus said that the kingdom is like yeast, unseen but influential. This strange intermission is an opportunity for us to seek the Holy Spirit fire that will result in a revival. Revival in our hearts, revival in our homes, revival in our church, revival in our community, revival in our nation, and revival in our world. It seemed to start slowly with 12. Those 12 were trained to be leaders and three years later there were 120. Not a big jump, but when the time was right, the gospel exploded. We're in that period of waiting now, that strange intermission. We must make ourselves ready. May the Holy Spirit give us power and boldness to be his witnesses. Amen. In these difficult times of coronavirus, Baptist Temple is alive and well. We are doing what we have always done reaching out to our community to meet their needs. We are connecting with our members by teleconferencing, an online worship service, and by telephone. God is not finished with Baptist Temple. And after this pandemic is over, we will emerge from this stronger than ever. You can send your tithes and offerings to Baptist Temple, 901 East Drexel Avenue, San Antonio, Texas, 78210. Or go to our website at www.mybtsa.org. That's www.mybtsa.org. And click on the donate button 
to donate with PayPal. Always remember this, be strong in the Lord and be of good courage. May God bless you.